recording in progress. We're recording. <laughs> you want to you want to talk film? Hello. <laughs> want to talk we got cinema? Out of showcase video for months. Uh, Why? Bobby Why, James? Bobby Fister was the oh, was you said his name. The whole thing. Oh wait, we said his name like thirty five times in the podcast. Esquire. Yeah. <laughs> Was the number two top money income person for this place because every weekend oh. we would go and rent. Like he kept them in business. I see what you're saying. Four or five, <laughs> four or five movies on Friday. If it was a like a, a weekend that we were allowed to stay two nights, no. we would bring those back and rent like four or five more. Awesome. One one lady that worked there, we walked up with some books and she's like, "Oh, you got you. Got, this is a good picture." And we ah! cracked a joke about being like a motion picture and like a, a film. It's like it's not like a picture. And she got so furious she kicked us out. <laughs> yeah. That was when we got kicked out because we were laughing at her for calling it a picture. Yeah, like, we were banned. Posted on the like, wall uh, no, shit. I want a sequence of pictures. I I want a whole yeah. like a lot of pictures. That's a really yeah. quite a lot of them. <laughs> Oh, no. whatever it didn't now and we us. had them query the account right like there was a time where we're in there we're like can can are are we like one of the biggest renters and we're like well, let me see oh yeah you're like number five you know like <laughs> number two yeah For and general... the dude, yeah the dude who was number one it was it was pretty <laughs> much pure porn so yeah. we even as children well you know preteens, tweens we were back at the house like this is not only is this bullshit but she could probably lose her job yeah <laughs> That's where number two being banned is like, that's going to be seen on the profit and loss meeting. <laughs> well, especially over something like that. It's not like you guys were like stealing or something. You know what I mean? Like, right. They never caught us for stealing. <laughs> we were, we were trying to hack out the little machines that you throw a quarter in to get free videos. We were definitely trying to tilt on all those things. And there, there was did. a one. So yeah, there's a gumball machine, like <laughs> one of the giant gumball machines. And like stamped on, I don't know, five percent of them was like free with rental. actual toxic ink. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. Fun. So we figured out like there's a key on the top, but you can just unscrew the whole top and reach in. <laughs> <laughs> it was like the one place they didn't have a camera. Showcase video is one of these little video stores, and and us kids got it in our head that we were going to watch every horror movie in their horror section. The problem with that is that it's constantly changing. They unload horror movies, which we often would buy in, in grocery yeah. sacks full of films for like 10 bucks. Oh, yeah. And yeah. they would get new that, ones. The, the grocery bag full of films was uh, Crazy Mike's. Yeah. Okay. That's true. That is true. I don't yeah. know what, what show Chun Kings did with their movies, but they were constantly changing. When true we were kicked graphic. out, we, we got our methadone fix from, from Crazy <laughs> Mike's, which was closer to Adam's house. Choice, we, choices we weren't going bit, about right? this in any sort of like educated way we would just go grab movies <laughs> start at the top and like that would have been smart that happened but we'd, it happened occasionally where we'd kind of go down the rack like seen it seen it seen it seen it seen it. what the hell uh don't let's save that one yeah yeah one of my favorites was the witchcraft series because there were about eight witchcraft movies and they're all bad in different ways you're watching them and you're like, okay, this is kind of bad pseudo torture porn movies. And then like by about three or four, it becomes softcore porn. And so you mm -hmm. kind of give up because you don't want to just sit there with your little bro boners together and, and like everyone else is asleep and you're like, hmm, wait a minute. But <laughs> uh, it goes back to being like fantasy horror again after that. So, so if you stay with the witchcraft series, it, it, goes back to being just normal unacceptable not like this isn't even the correct type of media for my consumer demands like i was just describing before uh red red meme is this this kind of first step into actually having ego to actually be like an agent so you see it in children where they start saying no and they start defying things because they have like a sense of self that is that is not just personality so there's kind of like the ego and the personalities that you invoke red gets the 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 bill for being um selfish and impulsive and warlike at, on a on a cultural societal level so it's kind of the jerk 
but it, it doesn't self-conceptualize this way. It's just like kind of my way or the highway, which which is a rational way of of dealing with things sometimes. Sometimes that's really needed uh, in order to make progress. It's a transition from magic to myth. So amber is myth and magenta is magic, but red is sort of magic mythic. And, and we're in between worshiping the human mind or the human being and worshiping spirits of nature. So we have these sort of hybridized things that I, I like to point out Egyptian kind of lore where it's people, but they have like animal heads to say that they're still like partially a nature spirit and partially like a human being, like a buff, brilliant, you know, beautiful human being. So we're starting to worship people, peopleness is becoming like an object of worship, which is new. It used to be just like people were victims of the spirits, like the spirits were the power and that was inflicted on us poor saps. But Red Meme is starting to worship humanity and the self and that is reflected in religion, which is the fundamental way of understanding reality. Uh, with red, you also see written language a lot more, like it becomes a thing to write down these these stories and lore and to to codify it into a system. So that's when you're getting into mythic. With the magic, it's more just kind of like hearsay. It's quite, kind of more like lore and just stuff that, you know, everybody knows. It is known Khaleesi is kind of more the magenta claim where red, it's like this document is the truth. And if you don't believe it, you're dead. And you're going Fine. to hell forever when you die. And you'll serve me in hell when you die. So it's it's just a <laughs> really bad situation. I will see you in hell. Yeah, for anyone who isn't me or or my immediate clan, you're toast. Positive red meme, I, I, I we often point to like the heroes of Western films because they're fundamentally just serving their own needs and drives, but they're doing good work by taking out the other bad guys, the bad guys that are victimizers and oppressors, they just want to be left to fucking loan. So that's your that's your sort of red meme hero in today's world is the the rebel without a cause sort of situation, or I guess rebel with a cause. Definitely a rebel, though. We have family groups that take care of each other and then tribes. And then we get to red where things get a little more complicated because some people aren't necessary anymore. Your your needs are so well met that you don't even have to do any of the things to meet other people's needs. And so the ego says, well, I'm bigger than this person, so I can just take what they have uh, instead of like contributing to the whole, I'll just take what they have. I'm big enough and strong enough that I can take it over. The 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 magentas that are still around adapt to you know it's not the earth spirit it's not the river spirit anymore it's fucking adam is bigger than me and so mm -hmm. i have to do twice as much so that i can give to adam this human god and have something for myself just to survive but in in like the animal side of it this this community of animals some of them aren't necessary anymore and so strength is now mm -hmm. the king instead of strength depends the hierarchy yeah where before it was knowing what is known and being able to interpret the signs you don't have to have any sort of physicality for that now uh, this guy can interpret all he wants but i can take all of his grain if i'm bigger Th this is the peak of sort of slavery and genocide and and these sorts of notions that we see as like fundamental like social problems like this is where they're at their peak um because human life is so devalued and the key word in storytelling is often like legend these are the the stories that are told by red are generally legends of power god figures that are like demigods or or beyond normal humans things like Gilgamesh and the Odyssey, where these are superhumans interacting with like gods, basically like gods on earth. You start having, uh, towards the end of Red, you start really personifying gods to where they literally are just people with egos and personalities, but they have superpowers too. Marvel superheroes are kind of red meme power gods, like in today's world, mm -hmm. that's like an example or like John Wick or, you know, most Matt Damon characters, anyone that's like beyond human in a kind of ridiculous way where it's just sort of like 
Hercules, you know, it's just granted by the heavens that this person is like this. So that's something we can look for in story. But I, I also just the, the magic mythic generates these sort of hateful, jealous, vengeful spirits and gods that are kind of the the mainstay of horror fantasy. Like the notion of a slasher is like a red meme notion. It's it's just lusty and angry and and horrible towards anyone who comes into its path but it's very much an ego and it very much has like drives and desires coming from its own immediate needs so we had said um bone tomahawk and now I haven't, uh, I haven't seen it. Uh, yeah we haven't seen that yet so oh okay yes. well it's it's a period piece it's a western and in the context of the Western, the the story is kind of that they find these cave people, these like not really troglodytes, but they they're magenta. It's just an interaction between those two peoples, and it generates horror because the the cave people like do human sacrifices and they like kidnap people from the little like the town. In the Western, um, American Western, like genre, you're kind of at a confluence of a lot of memes, you know, like orange meme exists, like rationality exists, industry exists, but you're out in a frontier. And so it's kind of mm -hmm. like anything goes, it's lawless. Mm -hmm. When the, when We're the rule of like law Mad breaks Max. down, it's very red. Mad, Mad Max. Max, absolutely. I don't know if that counts as horror though. So like, that's the only caveat, I guess, with that one. <laughs> Mad Max is a really great example of, of red like, meme. Yeah. Who's the most badass? Yeah, it's yeah, like the, the win, the you have to be firepower. worse. Yeah, you have to be harder yeah. core. You have to be tougher. Absolutely. It's a battle of wills. It's a battle of strength. Yeah. Ego rules. Might and makes we, right. I mean, I don't want to jump too far ahead, but Orange gets into it by saying, hey, we we the weak who are the many can band together under, under a, a flag, which is religion in most cases and then the numbers outpower the uh, overpower the the smaller strong that's the it, clash we'll have there in nearly every zombie movie you see the collapse of the rule of law and part of the post-apocalyptic fantasy is that it's now just like whatever you want to do here in this world you can get away with it because there aren't these mm -hmm. there aren't police there aren't there isn't military it's just make a bigger tank and you can take over a town and take all of its resources and yeah. grow your own empire and be the ruler. Woody Harrelson's character in Zombieland yes. needs <laughs> the nerdy character just as much as the nerdy character needs mm -hmm. the, keep, the, 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 the like strong character. They keep each other in check, kind of. That's, that's an orange dichotomy happening. The perfect balance, <laughs> right? You know, the rational, yeah, the rational one with, like, the crazy one who is also... The strongest. Like, strong and yeah. good at killing. <laughs> can be on his own, but yeah. the strength and irrationality yeah. will be his, his demise. Yeah, exactly. Where the weak so we had kind uh, of can survive on his own, but will land. be overpowered at some time. Zombie land is a good yeah, horror slash comedy, maybe. <laughs> and I always like to bring up Lord of the Flies here too. Again, it's like sort of pseudo horror. It, it is attempting to be like shocking and scary, but it's it's like you have amber orange meme children who. I think they get in a plane crash or or maybe I'm getting that from Lost, but they end up like in an island setting and they immediately, well, not immediately, but over the course of a period of time, they devolve to magenta and then they evolve to red and red is where it starts getting really scary because the meaner kids are the ones that take control and they want to just basically destroy and get rid of everyone that's not mean and strong and they do it using fake made up stuff that they're generating magical mythical um content in order to control to socially control so in the zombie movie in the post-apocalyptic we had mentioned zombies as being this kind of proxy for infrared and then mm -hmm. you're trying to maintain the social order of amber orange but there's this red beam that now is empowered because we don't have the infrastructure of of amber and orange and so that's when things collapse when when red is in equal footing with with amber and orange like it kind of is the strongest one it it sort of takes power and that's the function of it that's what it's really good at is is organizing 
Like it will get people organized in a way that's really dark and brutal. And that will result in, in an actual functional civilization to some extent. So the, the Vikings going all the way across to England and Scotland and Ireland easily took all of the, the temples and, and churches and all of this because they're bigger and stronger and power is, is the ruler. Red meme is generally the character of villains in, in general, uh, a lot of the time, the, the character of red meme is, is villainous in nature, uh, in, in today's world. Um, one example I like to bring up is, uh, child's play in Chucky, uh, mm -hmm. Chucky's a psychopath and in a, in, in a way, an integral, a psychopath is someone who never, who is like maybe biologically incapable of getting beyond red meme. Red has only accomplished understanding that I even have like a perspective and desires and, and they're just getting acquainted with that. And so they'll, they can even be fully self-aware of this and trying selfishly to fit in to society by pretending not to be that way. Like mm -hmm. through therapy, that's kind of what they learn to do. They don't learn to have compassion. They just learn how to pretend and, and yeah. how to like subdue that sort of drive to take power over others and victimize others. So a sociopath. So Chucky is, is a serial killer, like to begin with, but he, here comes the, the magic mythic thing is he, he's also like a, a small scale magician. So he has some ritual that he can transfer his soul into anything or anyone, it would seem, and he transfers it into a little fun doll that gets bought by a child. And then out of, out of, a, out of emergency, he didn't want to, that's not the plan. Yeah. To be this like weak doll. It's it's it, out of urgency. He has to. He hated it, but it was very appropriate to his character <laughs> ultimately. The the character is a really great example of red meme because red meme is funny. A lot of humor comes from red meme. It's it's a very funny <laughs> meme and Chucky's a very funny character. I, I think we generally watch those movies because it's funny to see this little doll like kicking and stabbing and going nuts on these poor innocent people. And, I've always um, had a problem with those movies because of physics. Oh yeah. Like so this 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 doll like three who has a soul uh, and no it's, muscles it's, or it's, bones. Yeah, it's a yeah. doll inhabited by a, a human soul. It also affects gravity somehow because like it, it can actually like physically hold its own against adults. What? <laughs> I what? guess it's just strength of will, man. I don't know. It doesn't really Yeah, like how how does any of how how do you even move an arm when you're a doll? It, it, it's like well, it's not yeah, that, the same stuff. Like more surface level than that. It's it's not a series of movies. Yeah, where where he like hides and then like cuts the Achilles and then stabs you when you're on the ground. He like muscles you to the ground. <laughs> it's an equal fight uh, physically in in the movies. It's like that's what. <laughs> and interestingly, like um, some of that lore, uh, like in actual red meme society like historically there there were these sorts of rituals of like soul transference um mm -hmm. generally migrating through the death process which i guess is what chucky does but it's usually to get up into the heavens and be one of the stars or something like that um or reincarnate reincarnation things things like that i think he was being put to death or something he, is, he escaped oh and then found himself cornered oh, in like a doll factory yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say we're gonna have to rewatch this. Had, yeah, had, had to ditch his human vessel, and and so it's it's sort of a bleed between um, magenta and red, but but yeah, soul transference. That's it's the idea that like my ego transcends this form that I could actually mm -hmm. be another person or multiple people, and OG zombie lore, like old school zombie movies, like White Zombie that the band was based off of. It's more a thing where you subjugate human bodies to your will it's it's like like a kind of vampirish thing where you you make like human golem drones out of out of people you steal their will and and they become your slaves it's a that's a very red beam concept that survives to this day as you had mentioned red is typically the villain and we we talked about it we even wrote it down as like number one choice is evil dead uh, because red in this case is our hero, Ash. 
So and and I ch- I ch- I like Evil Dead too because it's even better with the humor part of it and and Ash is more of a jerk as it goes he yeah. becomes more of a jerk more full of himself <laughs> because he's fighting the legions of of the dead and undead again you know like a, an incantation to summon like a host of demons is a is a very like red red meme concept so Necronomicon <laughs> yeah <laughs> Necronomicons. Are, are like real like there are necronomicons and they come out of like red meme cultures and so um, yeah along the point of red meme is when we we when writings start to have power so it only makes sense that in this in this stage there can be evil writings like the writing itself has power and so it's uh, a red meme story with a red meme protagonist and a red meme villain it's like and the filmmaking is a little bit red meme too, because it's counter studio. It's very DIY, and it's mm-hmm. sort of like a battle of wills to even get together the budget to make Evil Dead. And I think the whole story behind that is like they really wanted to make this movie, and they didn't care, you know, what the cost I was. It was. <laughs> I, I don't know how many other movies in in history uh, have Evil. If for those unfamiliar with the series, Evil Dead One is is a standalone independent movie. Evil Dead 2 is Evil Dead 1 with a budget. Yes. They, they, they made Evil Dead 1 the in order to get the to budget to make Evil Dead 2. And so it's a retelling <laughs> of the same story uh, the way they wanted to and not as confined with, with handheld cameras and, and location. They actually had some budget. So they went back and did the movie they wanted to. Then Evil Dead 3, <laughs> just a cinematic treasure was okay let's let's just uh do what everyone else at the time is doing and mess with time we'll go back in time uh to a red state to a red you know uh, section of of humans uh legacy uh and we'll 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 do the movie there yeah through the throughout those three movies it's it's like it's like pure red meme and uh army of darkness evil dead three or the medieval dead what was the working title <laughs> as <laughs> Very yeah, it's like a red meme society now. This modern day guy with like a chainsaw and a and a shotgun hand, a red meme power god is brought into that red meme medieval who's, world, early medieval. Who's apprehended and and basically kept in in like slavery state until mm-hmm. he proves his tools, the the chainsaw and shotgun, uh, make him the most powerful person, make him the strongest. So he is the leader against evil once he jumps up and the iconic shot of oh, yeah. his his stump hand Going into uh, locks into his chainsaw. Then then mm. huge power shift. You have all kinds of red me mottos too. good, bad. I'm the guy with the gun. That's such a red me motto. Like that's straight up red me. Yeah, Hail to the I'm, king, I'm baby. Bigger and stronger. So I'm <laughs> yes. change so, my mind. That this is why we we like Evil Dead series for Red Beam. It's really great, but there's so many examples. It's it's anything where you have like a very vengeful feud, uh, a battle of wills, a power god. So this is why we're including things like Halloween and basically mm-hmm. like most slashers, Freddy, Jason, Mike Myers, pseudo magic mythic psychopaths. Yeah, yeah. But like we said, like they didn't start that way necessarily. You know, like the first jason movie like you know it was it was the mom but he's not even in it yeah and then (laughs) but like but he he didn't start as like a god i feel like it like he kind of like became one as this revenge yeah as the series progressed you know revenge and undefeatable Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. so that well you're a god now perfect god like just pure hatred incarnate like Mm -hmm. living to to get vengeance (laughs) yeah backed up by physical prowess (laughs) <laughs> My, Michael Myers is, of course, like a, a psychopath, you know, like incapable of conceptualizing uh, the pain of others. And so it's like no empathy. Yeah. Very angry about his his condition. So he just kind of goes yeah. around stabbing. Freddie Freddy, people. Freddy was revenge, right? For, he got started on fire or something. He was lit on fire. So he was yeah, he was a revenge. he was a yeah. he was a child molester and he was burned. That. The local townspeople yeah, burned took, him to death in the school. Yeah, they took the law into their own hands. I remember that, yeah. I, I My dad told me this, and I thought it was one of his pranks, but actually in Nightmare on Elm Street Part 1, it does say it's based on a true, true story. And yeah. what it's actually talking about is both 
Ed Gain, who's also the true story behind Hannibal and um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And it's like when you say a true story, it's it's often the Ed Gain story. Very ba- loose. Based on. Loosely based on. Based on. But also uh, Korean folklore of um, these spirits who sit on your chest and suffocate mm-hmm. you to death in your sleep. Which yeah. a, a very real concern in, in the sort of superstitious people of that cu- culture. And that's another part of why it says based on a true story, because people actually die in their sleep and it's blamed on these spirits. Yeah. Sleep, sleep paralysis. There's also a phenomenon known as Korean fan death, where it was believed by people that having a fan in your window suffocated you to death. And because people believed that it happened. And so it was an actual medical condition that, that was like diagnosable, Korean fan death. It's a made up tale. So, I mean, placebo effect works both ways. Surely like, psychosomatic. <laughs> <laughs> that boy needs therapy. <laughs> Think of any any movie where there's someone or something that Absolutely. just overpowers and that's how it wins. Uh, Little Shop of Horrors. The plant mm. had the plants like a bully and like bullies. Mm-hmm. Uh, the guy in the feeding him into the blood. servitude. Yeah, exactly. Cause, yeah, because interesting. It's, it's, it's the boss, right? So that I gets mean, into I the manipulation little, thing. It could be a little infrared too, because it's. I, mean, I think it's an alien, you know, and it's like trying to get like primal <laughs> needs, right? It's trying to survive. It's trying to survive. But, it does it through manipulation. But, yeah. yeah, it does it through manipulation. So because there is some smartness in there. The manipulative element that it's mm-hmm. when it talks to people, it's trying to fool them into getting what it wants. That's that's the red meme like uh, creed. <laughs> Little Shop is is one of my favorites. And I, I have to recommend the al- alternate ending where instead of a happy thing where they go off and live with a white picket fence, the um, the plants take over the entire world and crush all the cities. Well, yeah, and there's a little musical number to it. <laughs> oh, okay. we got to check it. Yeah, it's uh, it's on YouTube. It, um, I, I I I don't know why they didn't stick with it. It's such a great ending. I was gonna say it ended. I remember it ending happy, but then mm-hmm. it, it pulls out, <laughs> and you see the little plants. Mm-hmm. They're still like alive. So you're like oh, along shit. the picket fence. Yeah, along the picket fence. So you're like, oh shit. So like, there it's not dead, and there's more of them. And so like, it ended happy, but like not really. <laughs> Yeah, but I don't remember like an actual like a taxi, and that would have been cool. <laughs> yeah, it, it it like goes through the city and shows all the plants like growing out of buildings and like eating people. It, it it's like yes. it goes full on like uh, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes at that point. He's a mean oh, green mother from outer space, but he's actually red. Mm-hmm. Mean mean red meme mother from outer mean space. Green. Yeah, we yeah. are all in agreement here that that is the plant from Mario. <laughs> of course, of course, the okay. piranha yeah. plant. Yeah. They, they they had influences, sir. Red meme, power struggle. It's ultimate strength over weakness, despite your beliefs. Human gods. Power wins. And revenge. And, yeah. Power driven by whatever motive, but the, the join us or art. die. The ancient art of being fucking huge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's right. Oh, so that's lots right. and lots of horror has red in it and is red, um, but we just kind of brought up some examples that are really, really um, red meme in character, red meme in villainous and uh, magic mythic in terms of the lore. So Thanks for tuning in. Oh, yeah. hit that subscribe, hit that like, give us give us your thumbs up, watch our ads and uh, join us on Discord. Put some ideas in the comments and we'll see you on that old day. D-trail. We'll thumb those up and you'll hear me talk about you on Talking integral. See you next time. Okay, I love you. Bye. Bye.